Praise the Lord. We're going to the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 2. Praise God. And in Revelation, chapter 3, verse 2. The Lord speaks to us. The Lord speaks to us in Revelation chapter 3, verse 2, right? And he starts out by saying, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remains that are that are ready to die. For I, for I have not found your work perfect before God. All right? Praise the Lord. What is he trying to say to us? Okay? He, he's calling us to wake up from that sleep that we've been in. And it's a death sleep. Okay? Because if you go to verse 1, he said to the angel to the, and, the, and to the angel of the church in Sardis, write these things saying, He who has the seven spirit of God and the seven stars, I know your works, that you have, name, you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Remember we read that? That even though they're alive, meaning they're existing, but they're spiritually dead. And this is the church that was functioning, a church that had a big ministry, a big, it was producing, yet the people were dead. They were spiritually dead. So in, in verse 2, he gives us a, a, um, a, a warning. He tells us, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. In other words, what you have heard and received and you have not forgotten, strengthen it. Strengthen that. In other words, remember when Jesus told us that the things that he says and the things that he does, he's seen his father do and heard his father say. So <clears throat> he's asking us to be watchful. Praise the Lord. Not, not to be a sleeping army. Okay? To stay awake. Now I'm going to give you the scripture Let's go to Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8. In Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Roman 8, 11. Tells us that the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, dwells in us. Praise the Lord. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to our mortal bodies through His Spirit. Praise the Lord. Who dwells in you. All right? So, He's not only talking to the church of Sardis, He's also talking to us. He's asking us to wake up and let's, let's, let's be on fire for him, praise the Lord. Let's, let's be hot for him, you know, not lukewarm or cold. Okay, go to Ephesians chapter 5, please. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. And when you're there, say amen. 514. He doesn't want us to be a sleep, sleepy army. He wants us to be awake. Okay? He wants us on fire. He, doesn't, he wants us hot, not, not lukewarm, not cold, right? He vomits lukewarm, praise the Lord. You know, so he rejects it. So he says here in Ephesians 5.14, Therefore he says, Awake you who sleep 
arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. That word light there in the New Testament is revelation. You can't have revelation without light. Praise the Lord. So what he's calling us to do is to be like a soldier stationed to keep guard of what he's given us. He says, be like a soldier stationed in position. Praise the Lord. You're guarding, you're controlling, you have access to where I, to where I have put you. To the place where I put you, you have access and you have control. Just stay awake, he says. Stay awake. So God is calling us to be what? He's calling us to be on guard. Go back to Revelation chapter 3, verse 2. He's calling us to be on guard. Revelation chapter 3, verse 2. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that you are ready, that you are ready to die, which remains that are, excuse me, which remains that are ready to die. You're not nurturing what I gave you. That's why you're not on fire anymore. You're not on fire. You're like, oh, I don't feel like going to church. Oh, I don't have to go to church. Oh, I don't need the word. Oh, I get, but yet we're a mess. Because we have given a gift. We've given up a gift. Somebody bewitched us. So we got to go back to what he gave us. And then he says, for I have not found your works perfect before God. I know you evangelized. I know you sang for me. I know you taught for me. I know you, you, you preached for me. I know you've done deacon work for me. I know you've done works in the church and, and I'm happy, but you got to go back. Go back to what I gave you. Verse 3, please. Remember, he says, therefore, how you have received and heard. You can't do much if you don't receive. You can't do much if you don't receive. You got to receive it to hear it. And then you hear it and you receive it. Then he goes on to say, hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. So when Christ challenges the members of the church, he's challenging us by he's challenging, challenging us by telling us to remember what we have heard and received. Don't forget it. He says, write it down if you're taking notes, receive it and hear it. Because the only one that can remind you is the Holy Spirit. That's why he talked about prior to that in verse 2. In verse 1 he talks about the seven spirit he talks about. And, and what does seven mean? Seven is a number of completion. So he's talking about the completeness of the spirit, of the Holy Spirit, his ministry. You can't receive anything unless the Holy Spirit gives it to you. So he's reminding us that it's important that we receive and hear. And the only way we can receive and hear is through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. When, the, when a church doesn't have the Holy Spirit, it's dead. It's a dead church. And then he gives us an, he gives us an instruction here in verse 3. He tells us to hold fast. Because why does he want us to hold fast to what we have heard and received? Because without that, you cannot return to obedience. Without that, you can't not go back to the word of God. And then he says, I will come upon you as a thief. A lot of um, theologians, they, they refer that to the rapture. But what I'm seeing here is he's warning us. You know what he's warning us? Against sudden judgment. That God will bring to the church. 
Just like he brought to Smyrna. So he tells us, you got to watch and repent. You know when you're doing it right and you know when you're doing it wrong. I know I do. So in Matthew, go to Matthew 24, please. Matthew 24. In Matthew 24. Matthew 24, please. Matthew 24, verse 43. So in Matthew 24, verse 43. Just give me an amen when you're there. Thank you. So there he says, But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allow the house to be broken into. So we don't know what time the Lord's going to come back for his people. And we might get caught with our pants down. So we got to be alert. We got to be ready. I like that. We got to be alert and ready. Anybody heard that? Alert and ready. But I like what he tells us. Let's go back to Revelation, please. Chapter 3. Revelation, please. Revelation. Chapter 3, verse 2. I like when he says, be watchful. Be watchful. And then he tells us, to strengthen, strengthen what you've heard. Amen? Strengthen what you heard. So how do you strengthen what you hear? Someone, how do you do it? Reading the word. Receiving it. Receiving it. Then you retain it. Then you'll be able to release it. You can't release what you have not retained. So we need to write these three words down. We need to be able to receive God's word. Hmm. Retain God's word. Okay. And then release it. That's why he says, be watchful in verse 2. What is another word for watchful? Alert. alert. Thank you, that's good. Vigilant. Be alert. Knowing the time that now is a high time to awake out, to wake out, to, to be awake, excuse me. It's time to wake up, he says, of your sleep. That's what he's saying to us. Okay, I got a, I got a scripture. Uh, yeah, that looks good. Romans 13. Go to Romans 13. I got a scripture. Romans 13. Remember, we went to Romans 8, but now we're going to Romans 13. 13. 13, verse 11, please. Praise the Lord. So we are admonished to do this. We got to be watchful. I like what Harry said. Alert. We have to be alert. When you're not alert, you're where? You're asleep. So in here in Romans 13, verse 11, he says... And do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out, to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is near. Then when we first believe. See? So we're going right back to strengthening what you heard. 
All right, go back to Revelation chapter 3, verse 2, please. Revelation 3, 2. Revelation 3, 2. <clears throat> and what's the second word he says? And strengthen. What do you want you to strengthen? Strengthen the things which remains that are ready to die. So if you don't strengthen what you have, see, there's a, the law of recognition says whatever you don't recognize will exit your life. You have to fuel it. You got to give it fuel, energy. Energy is exhausted through movement. Praise the Lord. Amen. So he says, you're about to lose what I gave you. That's why I want you to get out of your sleep. Thank God that a little good still remained, huh? Thank God that there's still a little good remaining. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we can strengthen it and, and, and do what we need to do. Now, the bad part about this Sardis group or church they were like the mother of, 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 of the dead orthodox. You don't want to fall in that category. You don't want to be a churchgoer. And that's all you do. So the same way God is calling Sardis to recall, praise the Lord, the formal days. In other words, how they were on fire when they first received them. He's calling us to do the same thing, too. Because he wants us to be, listen to these two words I'm going to give you. He wants us to be filled with purity and, and zeal. And that's how you hold fast. And, and it's not complicated. He's just telling us to retain the simple truth that he's given us. Of the gospel. But we don't do that, man. We want to carry all these baggages. So discard those baggages. Did you hear me? Get rid of them. How I hear you say it? Excess. Those extra baggages. Get rid of them. And then he says, just repent. What does the word repent mean? To change your mind. Write it down. So now when you hear repent, you say, okay, God's asking me to change my mind. I got to change the way I'm thinking. Reformation. Revelation before reformation. That's the title. So, what is he saying to us? That we as the church, we need to return back to Christ. How do you do that? Seeking his will. Seeking his will. And seeking the spirit that teaches us rather than the man-made ideas about theology and, th and truth. We got these man-made ideas, you know. We are called to proclaim the gospel. And we are called to return to Christ. So it's time for us to start catching the unawareness of us. The unawareness. I'm unaware that I'm doing the things I'm doing. Because you don't know what hour is going to come back. You don't know what hour. You don't know, what he's gonna, you don't know when he's going to come back. No one can understand the book of Revelation unless it's what? Interpreted by the Holy Spirit. You hear me? And then I love that. He says, he says, awake thou, thou that art sleepy, and Christ shall raise you from the dead. 
And I love that verse 4. Let's go to verse 4. Revelation chapter 3 verse 4. He says, you have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Praise the Lord. When he talks about the white, he's talking about, uh, 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 he's talking about, praise the Lord. When he talks about white, he's talking about purity. You know, a garment without sin. You know, a garment ready to serve. The character of purity. What, what does the white represent? Righteousness. The white robe of the mul multitude represents the righteousness of the saint. Go to, go to Revelation chapter 7, please. Go to Revelation chapter 7. Thank you. Revelation chapter 7. Revelation 7, 14. And he says there in 14. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. That's good. That's right, Mother Margarita. And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Praise the Lord. Come on now, he's talking about what? The righteousness of the saint. Amen? So that's how he wants us. He wants us right. Praise the Lord. You know, he wants you to be reformed. Amen? He, he's not, you know, he can't, he can't deal with us when we're unclean. He loves us, but he don't like our unclean, uncleanliness. Now, let me see, let me see something. Go to 2 Corinthians, please. 2 Corinthians... 2 Corinthians, hmm, 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Hmm, Jesus, I love you. So this is what he's saying to us. So we need to, we've been promised a reward if we keep our garment, what, pure. <laughs> okay, how do you do that? You hold on to him. You hold on. You, 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 you nourish what he's giving you, man. Put it to work. Now here in, in 2 Corinthians 6, what I said, 6 what? Thank you, 617. He says, he says, therefore come out from the mandem and be separated, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. Okay. Okay, so, 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 why he wants us to come out? Because he wants us to overcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With the blood of the Lamb. Yes. Yes, because the blood is the only thing that can remove our sins. Praise the Lord. The blood. Yeah. And the washing. But also the washing represents the word. The washing of the word. In Ephesians, remember he says that? Ephesians 6, is it? Somebody find it for me. Ephesians. Come on, let's go there, please. Harry's starting something here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and then he says, They would be dwelling in Father, bring them, bound service, the washing of the word. Come on now. The washing of the word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, somebody. Washing of the word. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Father. Here we go. Yes, 526, that's right. Very good. Good for you. That, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. So that's why he said, 
Somebody help me. Revelation 12, 7, I think it is. Which one is it? How do we overcome? Praise the Lord. We overcome by the blood and the word, right? Yes. Revelation 12, 11. Revelation 12, 11. Did you, okay, okay. Did you get Ephesians 6, 26? 5, 26, excuse me. Write it down. Five, Ephesians 5, 26. And now go to Revelation 12, 11. Revelation 12, 11. That's good. Revelations 12, 11. And they overcame him, the enemy, by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. Praise the Lord. Okay? So in verse 5, in verse 5, when we go back to Revelation 3, 5, you know what he tells us? He said, he that overcome shall be clothed in white. Praise the Lord. Okay? Revelation. Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, verse 5. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garment, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Praise the Lord. So guess what? If you don't confess, if you don't confess the Lord here on earth, God's not going to confess your name in, in heaven. And I love what he said. He said, he said that he will never erase their name. That's a heavenly registry. That book, that name is on that book. Once again, he said, I will never erase their name. By any means, I, will, I won't blot it out. His name. Those who are not ashamed of Christ, he says. That's what he's saying. You're not ashamed of Christ? Christ won't be ashamed of you. During your earthly lives... You must be proud of your Lord. Acknowledge him. Because if you acknowledge Christ here on earth, Christ will acknowledge us in heaven. Praise the Lord. Before the Father, he says. And not only the Father, but the angels too. So go to Luke chapter 12. Luke 12. I believe it's verse 8. Luke 12. Oh, here it is. Luke 12, Luke chapter 12, verse 8. He says, Also I say to you, whoever confess me before men, him the Son of Man also will confess before the angels of God. So not only would he confess you, confess your name in front of his Father, she's part of us. He's part of us. He, also, the angels are going to be testimonies, uh, witnessing that. Praise the Lord. But if you don't do that, your name can be blotted out. <laughs> okay. But he who denies me before man will be denied before the angels of God. Oh, my God. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, we can do 10 too. And anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But to him who blasphemes me against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Eee. Don't talk about the Holy Spirit. Who's the Holy Spirit? The Spirit of the Father. Praise the Lord. That's why the seven, uh, the spirits, the seven spirit represents the uh, complete, completion and that is the spirit of the, the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Remember we talked about that? Amen. We talked about the seven spirit. Do you remember that? Come on now. The seven spirit represents who? The completeness of the Holy Spirit's ministry. Revelation chapter 5, please. Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. 5, 6. 5, 6. 
Revelation 5, 6. <laughs> Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne, and of the four living creatures, and the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into the earth. Praise the Lord. Everything you receive, you receive it through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You cannot have revelation or light without the ministry of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, you receive it, but you need the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. Okay? Now, Sardis, that church died. And why they died? Because they did not let the Holy Spirit control the assembly. I need you to perceive that. When you don't let the Holy Spirit control the ministry, control your life, you will die. Then you wonder why people apart, depart themselves from the things that God has called them to do. This is real serious. Very serious. We need to come back. We need to start doing the work of the Lord. What God called you to do? He'll confirm it. He'll confirm it. For this reason, Ephesians 4.11... For this reason, I've given some to be. Not everybody is called to be an apostle. Not everybody is called to be a prophet. Not everybody is called to be an evangelist. Not everyone is called to, to be a, a, a teacher. Not everyone is called to be a pastor. But whatever he called you to do, sons and daughters of glory, do it well. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because he called you to do it. He called you to overcome, according to verse 5. He that overcome shall be clothed in the white garment, remnant. And I will not blot out his name I will, out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before the angels. <coughs> the white remnant, the white gar garment is found upon the bride of Christ at the marriage of the supper of the Lamb. Praise the Lord. So we all be dressed. We are the bride of Christ. Male, everybody's okay? Breathe in and breathe out. Male and female, we all are the bride of Christ. And we will all be dressed in white. How very nice. <coughs> Amen. So let's be glad and let's rejoice and let's give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is, is to come. And we are the bride. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so the bride of Christ at the marriage, the supper of the Lamb. Amen? Good. What is reformation? Reformation is the act of making an improvement. <clears throat> we need to start making improvement. We need to repent. What does repent mean? Change the way you think. Excuse me. Change the way you think. Okay? <clears throat> it's time to change our behaviors. Or the structure of something that's going on in our life. What is your behavior? What is your structure? Is it lined up with the word of God? <laughs> Amen. All right. Go to um, Revelation chapter 19, please. Revelation 19, and we'll close after this. Revelation. Revelation 19. Go to verse 7. We'll read 7 and 8. <clears throat> Remember I talked to you about Wearing the white garment and, and what I said. So in, 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 in 7 it says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. Hallelujah. That's us. 
And then he says, And to her it was granted to be an arrayed in fine linen and clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteousness of acts of the saint. My God. We talked about that, right? What we said before. We said that the white robe of the multitude represent the righteousness of the saint. Praise the Lord. And, 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 and that robe is given to us for service and character. Service and character. So Sardis, there were members in that church who did not defile their garment. Hmm. How, do you, how do you defile your garment? Yes, sir. Both of you are right. So they didn't do it. They didn't do it. Sin will not walk in the white. Hallelujah. <laughs> I love this. Sin cannot walk in the white. Oh, man, please receive. Those that have a ear, let them hear what the Lord is saying. White is purity. Service and character. The clothing of the believer refers to their service and character. Once again, go back to Revelation chapter 7, verse four, uh, 14, sorry. Revelation 7, Revelation 7, please. Revelation 7, and then verse 14. Uh, come on, you. Here we go. 7, 14. Amen. Here we go again. And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the one who come out of the great tribulation. Here you go, Harry. And washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Praise God. Okay, so let's talk to the viewers. Thank you so much. Praise God. Continue uh, studying with us and uh, feeding your spirit. Uh, we'll continue teaching on Revelation. We haven't even scratched the surface yet. Praise the Lord. And remember, Jesus is Lord. Let's give God a wonderful applause. Praise the Lord. Amen.